Hello, everybody. It's another Thursday, and we're back again for another chat. This week, we are talking about how to guard your heart. Um, and I think you know, in the in the world that we live in today, it's important to. There's so much that goes on, isn't there? There's so much that, and it's so busy. And we get information thrown at us from every single direction. Um, and to be able to guard what you let in, what you let influence your thoughts, your thinking, your behavior, you know, that's, that's really important. Um, you know, looking at the Bible, I think, you know, we, I think the Bible tells us that we are to guard our hearts because out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks, for example. Um, but let's start with you, Ingram. Guarding your heart. What does that when you hear that? What does that mean? What does that speak of to you? Why is she starting with me? <laughs> um, I think guarding my heart just means minding my state of mind almost. Because I think sometimes the Bible talks about the heart is like a representation of the mind. Okay. Where I see, I see a very strong connection between the two so it's your feelings really right because we always talk about our heart in relation to our feelings so I think it just means um conducting your life in such a way that you remove negativity you're not always feeling negative yeah okay so can you just repeat what you first said I, I completely missed that because you said something and say so I said um for me when I think of the heart Mm -hmm. it's always connected to the mind right and that's okay. your feelings as well so for me guarding your heart is really living your life in such a way that you keep negative things away from you right. okay all right that's interesting g over to you <laughs> guarding your heart <laughs> i think that's a tough one it really is because oh as believers, yes, we're to love and care for other people. Mm -hmm. And if anyone, man or woman, is vulnerable, mm -hmm. there are people out there that can really play in that. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be catastrophic for people. Mm -hmm. That's why the gift of discernment is so important. Even for right. you, even vulnerable people can have the gift of discernment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you've got you've got to listen to your other family in Christ around you. If somebody gives you a warning about somebody maybe you're getting too close to or something, it's not mm -hmm. that they're jealous. It's not that they don't want you to have fun. It's not that they don't want you to help people. It's mm -hmm. their current concern for you. And they might see something in this person or persons that you don't. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it, it is it, it is really important we all look out for one another. And we can come to one another if we have a concern about like, like that, to be able mm -hmm. to speak openly to people about it. And the people that we're talking to don't take offense. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole that's a whole different conversation. Yeah. That's a whole ke different kettle of fish. Yeah. That's something that I like. I find that our feelings can really dampen discernment. Mm. Um, because sometimes you know right? You know something, but because you like this person or you have your own agenda, and I'm speaking mm -hmm. from experience, you know, you don't, discernment is a funny thing. You don't even have to be a believer to have discernment. Mm -hmm. So the people I know who have the strongest discernments are not believers. Mm -hmm. But when they have that feeling, what the everyday person calls intuition, there are times when you, you just know that you shouldn't do something, right? Or you mm -hmm. meet somebody and you know that, okay, this project, I shouldn't really do it with this person, this mm -hmm. business, I shouldn't really go into it with this person, but because you and the person had a good conversation and you like mm. them, they dress well or they make you laugh or whatever. Or a typical one is dating for many women. Mm -hmm. A lot mm -hmm. of the time you knew, you knew that that guy was no good. <laughs> Trust me, you knew, but he was fine. You know, he dressed mm. well, he had a good job or whatever. So you put these things at the back of your mind, right? Mm -hmm. Because your feelings, your imagination of how this amazing relationship is going to be overtook mm. the reality of the fact that this guy was shady. So at the end of the day, you have to be, and I like the fact that Giselle talks about having people you can trust because 
I believe that sometimes if you're in a situation where you know that your, your feelings are clouding your judgment, mm -hmm. right? It's good to have that third party that you can talk mm -hmm. to. That mm -hmm. no nonsense friend. And again, I'll say this, they don't even have to be a believer. Somebody who is just honest, mm -hmm. a person who will tell you as it is. Mm -hmm. And they become your backup for when you're losing your discernment. Okay, okay, that's interesting. Thank, thank you. You were both saying in terms of how we relate to other people, mm -hmm. um, just guarding your heart against potentially hurt, if I'm understanding you both correctly. Yeah. Um, but what about what about in terms of um, the messages that we let in? In because oh, yeah. when you think of a guard, um, you know, a prison guard, for example. They're there to stop things coming in or stop people coming in. So what about protecting yourself and essentially your heart from these unscrupulous messages that want to worm their way in, that we're surrounded by them all the time? How can we guard our hearts from them? I mean, it's, it's everywhere, right? It's, it's the culture, it's the society, it's social media, it's your friends, it's family. How can we guard against in a culture that is so saturated and counter Christianity, counter, counter anything God-like? How can we guard our hearts from some of those messages? I know a big one recently, well, I say recently, a few months ago was music and the music industry, you know, the Beyonce and Sam Smith scandal and BAFTAs and all of that sort of thing where what did Beyonce do? Oh, her concert that was like um, themed with like idol worshipping and song worshipping and, and things like that. I guard um, my heart against Beyonce. I don't like her music to begin with. <laughs> that's why I don't know this. But yeah, that's you, right? But again, you have these young girls that for them, celebrity ship is like idol worshipping, right? How can we speak to some of not just young girls, even young boys? You know, football culture is a big thing. How can we help these young children guard their hearts against some of these messages that are out there? Gee, you've asked this time. I don't know because okay. I'm not a parent. Mm, okay. I can only think if I were a parent, what I mm -hmm. would do and what I wouldn't do. Okay, but, let's hear let's hear the benefit of your wisdom from the other side of the equation then. Okay. I wouldn't let them go to it. Okay. So, All right. Okay. Because um my husband and I, uh, we are very careful what we allow into our house through TV mm -hmm. and social media and radio. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're two people in our 70s and, mm -hmm. and, and, and we're careful. Um, and I can only imagine it if I had I had children and would be grandchildren, maybe even great grandchildren by now, I mm -hmm. would be very, very, very careful about what they would be watching in mm -hmm. my home. Mm -hmm. And I must say, like a, a lot of Christian parents have taken that view. Um, but then you have perhaps other people saying, well, that's a bit extreme, saying, you know, ban this and ban that, and that's not really the way forward. Um, but, that, what, but that's the lies of the enemy. Okay. That, that is the lies of the enemy. That is the deceitfulness of the enemy even to non-believers. You don't mm. have to be a believer to be deceived and lied to by the enemy. Mm. You know, he's, got non, <laughs> he's got non-believers tied up in, 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 in all shapes, thinking that everything's okay. It's only a wee bit of harmless fun. Mm. Mm. You know, it wasn't only last uh, October and the October before in B&M's they were selling plastic Ouija boards at a pound. Yeah, oh yes crazy. yeah i remember that yeah that was yeah. crazy that's only a wee bit of fun but think of the portals that's opened up when children start yeah. playing on a ouija board you know mm. i was always scared of ouija boards even though as a teenager or in front of those things yeah. exactly right the, the inhibitions have been lowered exactly 
I'm sorry, I jumped in. You were going to get naked to talk. Sorry. Yeah, go on. Now you can go. Let's hear what you yeah, have to say. I think Giselle is right. And I have to say that, you know, the concern now is not even just believers. You have non-believers. You have even atheist parents who have had enough. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, historically in this country, you couldn't just show any film, right? You had PG. There's always been that sense of regulation. So mm -hmm. I think parents still regulate what their parent, their children watch, depending mm -hmm. on their level of tolerance for things. So that's one way. Mm -hmm. But I think the difference now is also going to be that we need to talk with our children because mm -hmm. I remember um, reading something where somebody, I think she was now a singer, and she was saying that, oh, when they were growing up, she grew up in a strict Christian family. Mm -hmm. They weren't allowed to listen to secular music and all this stuff. And so I think, the consequence of that when you don't explain these things to children is that they can, you know, they can then be overly curious, right? They're like, okay, mm -hmm. I'm banned from seeing this thing. What is it? So they'll mm -hmm. go to school, they go to friends' houses and they listen. And she ended up being, I don't know, R&B singer or something like that. And some kids can really go to the extreme then and be mm -hmm. the opposite. So I think it's important to talk with children. Okay. I really think that from my own experience of dealing with children, I'm not a mom yet, but I have nieces and nephews and kids are very intelligent. These people mm -hmm. are by far more intelligent than you give them credit for. <laughs> mm -hmm. These modern children, they're just on another level, you know? So I think you need to understand their language and begin to break things for them. Mm -hmm. But I also think that one thing that Christians can learn from Muslims is to get your children in tune with their spirituality at an early age. Mm. You know, we take our children to church and it's nice okay they go to Sunday school they eat ice cream and all that fine but are they learning the word are they beginning to if you think that God spoke to Samuel at was it the age of six or eight mm. Mm -hmm. he wasn't very young. young yeah at a very young age so a lot of us feel like our children cannot be um taught the word of God or they cannot be introduced to God at a young age I'm telling you from when they are even in the tummy because you have all these scientific mm -hmm. studies that, that the music you play, if you read to children, they develop That's intellectually. True. Like if we have all these things, people play Mozart to children when they are pregnant, right? Because they want their kids to be smart. Mm. Why are we not playing an audio Bible to them too, to make them strong in the spirit? You mm. know, so I feel that if you bring up your child in that way, that from one, two, they're looking at Bible pictures, just as you teach them nursery rhymes, you're teaching them Bible verses, that word is already building up in them. So by the time they come to a certain age, right, even if you're telling them, okay, don't listen to X, Y, and Z music, you're saying to them, because this music doesn't glorify God. Mm -hmm. And sometimes your children may hear something outside, right? And they come. I think if you find out that they've already heard, don't be angry with them or anything. Sit down with them and say, okay, you yourself look at the lyrics of this song, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that these lyrics mm -hmm. glorify God? So, for example, there's a popular song that Sidonia and I know, right? We're going to use the African music scene. There's a Nigerian guy called Flavor. He had this song that was popular, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there was a term there that is rather derogatory to women, right? Mm -hmm. But everybody, because the rhythm was nice, mm -hmm. everybody was in on this song, right? Mm -hmm. And parents forgot that this is just full stop inappropriate lyrics for, for, for kids. Mm -hmm. But, you know... A little kid, and I think it was even my nephew, who then heard this song and then he said to his dad, what does this word mean? <laughs> the child. Wow. So at times, that's what you do. You sit and you say, look, if you're hearing a song like this that has bad words, that hurts Jesus's feelings. And you know, one thing about children, children love Jesus. If you Thank want you. to see people on this world who love Thank Jesus, ah, these children. They really do. They tell a child that Jesus says, don't do this. Trust me, they won't. So it it. Wait, anyway, that's true. So, yeah. So if you say to him, if, okay, listen to that song, do you think Jesus will like it? If you listen to it, it will make Jesus cry. Trust me, the five year old will be like, no, I don't like that song. Mm. Jesus doesn't like it. And once you start getting them from that level, as they grow older, they would have already had that bond with Jesus where they will just be in such a way with God where they don't even, they don't have to force themselves. Even if they do those things, they'll feel bad. The main thing, I think, is to get those children to develop a relationship with Jesus. Then it, mm. They just have this conviction to not even do things that Jesus doesn't like. Mm -hmm. That's what you make. You make a few very interesting points, but the one that sort of speaks, you know, speaks out to me that is this idea that some Christian, I mean, it might, it might be changing now, I'm not sure, but certainly historically, Christian parents weren't having these conversations with their kids. 
either yeah. because you know we shied away from it and we thought oh you know we shouldn't be speaking about certain things um and like you say that sort of opened the door for kids yeah. curiosities which is, yeah. which is they just said natural stop yeah. why is it bad what do you mean yeah. by it bad? yeah and the kids were obviously curious which kids are curious uh, yeah. but in in trying to satisfy that curiosity they obviously went looking for answers in the wrong places mm. um so it's important I think what I'm hearing here is important that as Christian parents, we're having these conversations with our kids because when we have those conversations at home with our kids, it's a controlled environment. You can control. And, and, and it's that thing as well. If, if you get in there first, you can leave a lasting impression. Absolutely. Because if you're coming in on the back foot of the kid having looked at Google or had you know extensive conversations with friends about certain topics mm -hmm. and as a parent you're coming in on the back After. of trying to correct those misconceptions it's that's hard. a hard job that's a harder job to do than than for you to get in there first have those conversations in a controlled environment with with boundaries and, and controlled language and leave an impression there mm -hmm. so that when these kids are then being exposed to things out there, their curiosity has been satiated in, in, or dampened. And they also know within which parameters they should be having those conversations. So when conversations with their peers are, are, are starting to get out of hand, they're like, mm, okay, mum said, you know, this is yeah. grown up and this is going a bit too far. I better extract myself from this, from this group of friends yeah. or extract myself from this conversation. So yes, you're certainly right. There's, there is something to be said for Christian parents not shying away from those conversations um but getting in there getting in there first and leaving those impressions those biblical um footprints of what the bible and Christianity has to say about those conversations because that will certainly guard the children's hearts when they yeah. get to the point where they're inquisitive they're curious and they're wanting to satiate their curiosity. Um, so for sure, that's one way which we can help these kids um, guard their hearts by giving them the information at home. Yes, you're certainly right, Sidonie. And I, I can just think of an example now. When I was a kid, right? I went to a Catholic school. And if you went to Catholic school in Cameroon, there was this book, The Catechism, right? Our mm -hmm. Way to God. And, you know, it left an impression on me as a child mm -hmm. when they were thinking about things like witchcraft right mm. i didn't even know what i was saying but there used to be this list of things that offend god and they would put all these things and witchcraft was among them i remember mm. we'll have to recite it in class but, but do you know what that thing sank into my brain so mm. when i even got to a point where i was exposed enough to be cur curious about those things i just grew up absolutely hating witchcraft mm. because of what i've been taught as a child in school mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right so if you had brought witchcraft to me in the mm -hmm. form that we knew growing up right mm -hmm. the sangoma looking person i would have told you to clear off i didn't understand why anybody would go and see a witch doctor it was to me stupid it was sinful mm -hmm. you know but we have to understand that now for example right the way witchcraft is invented is changing mm -hmm. so even i fell for these things that i absolutely hated right i thought i was just being curious about other forms of spirituality but the fact that i had been um taught a certain way right i remember when i was a student being approached by a clairvoyant my mm. immediate reaction was to say no mm. because you know what i remember i was about 19 years old i immediately remembered what i'd learned as a child at mm. six and he said to me this is wrong mm. and the woman was trying to persuade me oh i can read your face i was like i don't need to know this i don't need to know my future i'm quite <laughs> happy with, i have enough problems yes. in the here and now if i hadn't been taught <laughs> about that i may have been curious and at that point, I was really going through a difficult time. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was vulnerable. But because that impression had been left in me as a child that this is mm -hmm. wrong, wrong, this is wrong, I was able to walk away. Several times, clairvoyance followed me. I was always able to walk mm -hmm. away. Yeah, I had I had an experience like that. And yeah. I said, oh, yeah. And she said, I can, I can read your palm. I can tell you about your future. I was like, 
why do I want to know about I mean for me it was very it was very common sense for me it was very rational I was like why do I want to know about the future yeah, I have, I'm, I'm it won't be exciting trying to get through the problems of today and you want to tell me what's going to happen tomorrow like no thank you yeah, to me, I, was like, I want my future to be exciting if you tell me now it won't be exciting to me anymore yeah yeah so no but that's that's certainly you know helping those kids God I mean I, I heard a pastor say that um one of the ways say he's got I can't remember who it was but he's got boys um or certainly at least one of his children is, is a boy or two at least of a boy and and obviously boys are into rap and into hip-hop and it's a I think it was a black pastor and obviously you know how you know the the hip-hop movement and the rap movement in America they're Americans um is very very sort of gun glorifying um, yes women like they would get through words for women and everything yeah. and he heard his boys singing I think I can't remember the musician's name but they were singing this really popular song um <clears throat> and he thought to himself like you've got like that's that's not respectful to your mother like you can't be exactly. I mean they weren't they weren't singing it like in a bad way they were just singing yeah. what you know what's yeah. popular at the moment and he thought but he thought if he goes in there and tries to have a conversation with these boys that's just going to go the other way because they're just going to see him like a spoil sport. They're just going to say, oh, you don't want us to be cool. You want to trap us in this, you know, Christianity, religious nonsense. Mm. And so he thought, which I thought was absolutely clever. He actually went onto the internet, printed out the lyrics to these songs. Yes. Um, and then called the boys to sit down. He didn't tell them it was a song. He, didn't, he took away the title of the song, took away um, the artist's name and just like made it like a poem, like a, you know, yes. and, and gave them these sheets of paper. <laughs> and so when they were sat together in the evening, he gave them the paper and he said, read it. <laughs> I love and that. he said they got to about the third line and they couldn't carry on it anymore. <laughs> so well, I can't hear you anymore. What's that? <laughs> you know, the B word was in there, you know, that they used to describe women. Um, you know, and the the H word that was used to describe women were in there, but obviously sat in the presence of their mother, reading it, not singing it, you know, with the, with the tunes, but reading yes. it. Um, they couldn't say it. <laughs> you said they got Love to it. Love <laughs> it. and that's genius because you know rhythm deceives people. Yes, deceives you know, people. And, I, and yeah. I thought it was really clever. So he said his boys got to buy the third line and they couldn't. Obviously, their mother was sat there, their father was sat there. And he said, Well, what aren't you? He said, This is the lyrics of the song that you normally sing by this artist. And I said, Oh, no, dad, no, it's not. He went, Yes, it is. So he took them onto the internet and he showed them. And he went, Well, how did you feel about saying those things in front of your mother and I? And the boys apologized to their mother and they said, You know, that's not. And he went, do you think that's, that, that glorifies right. God's creation? Do you think that glorifies people that are made in God's image? And the boy said, no, and these are, you know, I think they're in the mid or late teens. Um, but that was a very, like you said, you know, genius way to it's deal wrong. with a, 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 a cultural problem. You yeah. know, you've always got to find a way, and, and I'm learning this and heaven help me, always find a way to get the children to think about yes. what's wrong in their in the behavior and it's hard because sometimes in the heat of the moment you want to tell them you want to enforce the the, the rule you want to just lay down the law authority. yeah but actually I find from limited experience if I find God help me I will have more years of experience but what I find is getting them to think about what what's done. inappropriate about their behavior yeah. seems to have a longer lasting effect it's a it's a it's a more yeah. painful process i'll tell you that for sure um but the results seem to be more long lasting than laying down the law and saying this is wrong because the bible says so of course the bible says so but if they're not recognizing that themselves then they're not able to auto correct or to self-correct when they're out there yeah and um, and so you know i think we certainly have to guard our hearts against there's so much out there there's new age spirituality oh that's you know, all these the messages that come out from everywhere and come at us um yeah, your but own God. those are external things i personally also think we need to guard our hearts from our hearts we need to guard our own hearts 
from our from our hearts themselves because our hearts are i mean the bible says it who can know that the heart of man is just it's horrid it's a horrid 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 thing just i can see you nodding along there what is that speaking of to you when i said that because i could see you completely agreeing with that you know guarding our our hearts from our own selves well you know we're flesh and blood aren't we we're weak Mm. Mm, mm. Uh, temptations come our, our way mm. like even sort of getting mixed up with the wrong people you're trying to do good and getting mixed up with the wrong people and you mm. end up mm, mm. lots and lots and, and, you know, and there's lots of different heartbreak mm-hmm. you know yeah most people I think seem to think that heartbreak is only um, romantic heartbreak no mm-hmm. there's heartbreak when children turn against parents yeah. Um, yes, it's so heartbreaking. It really must be. Mm. And you know, there's heartbreaking when a work colleague might stab you in the back. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. there's there's lots and lots of different heartbreak. There's heartbreak when our political and religious leaders of our land let us down. Mm. <laughs> I don't think I care about the political ones so much anymore. It's not heartbreaking. I tell you, <laughs> I don't think I care about um, politicians anymore. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, we do have to guard our own hearts. We, yeah. we really do. And that mm-hmm. is biblical. We're told in Proverbs mm-hmm. uh, to, to, to watch our hearts because mm-hmm. it's the life flow of it's the flow of life. Mm-hmm. And it That's is. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. People had died of a broken heart. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. That's medically For recognized, sure. by the way. Yeah, it's it is. Broken heart mm-hmm. syndrome or something. They call it mm-hmm. in medicine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, yeah. when we're and when we're talking about kids and everything, how do we bring children up and all? What sprang to my mind is again, it's in Proverbs: bring mm-hmm. up a child in the way of the Lord, and it'll stand to them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, isn't it? Sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's 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 just mind-boggling because you know, like like you were just saying there, Giselle, Proverbs seven twenty-five says, "Let not your heart turn aside to her ways." Do not stray into her paths. Um, you know, Jeremiah, that famous verse in Jeremiah 17, 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Oof. Who can understand it? Um, and there's just so many verses out there, um, you know, just telling us that, you know, Proverbs 23, 26, my son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Um, Psalm 73, 26, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And wow. there's, there's this sense there, um, Psalm 51, verse 10, creating me a clean heart oh, God, and renew a right spirit within me. That's um, one of my favorite Bible verses. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I wasn't a believer, I loved it. <laughs> and the one you were just talking about there is our proverbs 4 23 keep your hearts with all vigilance mm. for from it um flow the springs of life but there's there's an idea here of guarding your heart from external forces but also to me quite interesting here i find anyway when i read through the psalms especially um and and a lot of the proverbs is the sense of guarding our hearts from our own selves oh, like yeah. our 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 natural carnal fleshly sinful nature is one of sin and rebellion and i think you said something about that at the start when you said you know our feelings will, will quite often <laughs> your heart can the way of discernment you. your heart can take you to a place you never thought you would go and yeah. i bet if you walk into a prison now mm. A lot of people who committed murder didn't set out to commit murder. Mm. But something happened. Mm. And they find themselves now with a murder attack on them. That's the power of the heart. It's an extremely powerful thing. And mm. I think if we just acknowledge, right, like you said mm. to the leader, that your heart is very wicked. The one prayer that I think even I should be praying more is to ask God to literally save me from myself. Because mm-hmm. we cannot sit there and think that we're very righteous, right? Mm. We have people who say, oh, I would never do such and such a thing. You don't know. Mm. You only need to be put in a situation. Mm. 
and then you will mm. see what will come out of you. So yeah. sometimes you just pray to God and say, you protect me. Let that not even happen. I cannot yeah. stand here today and say I'm too righteous for anything. No, mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. the crazy lens that my heart has taken me to. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know yeah. how and, they and, you know, it says it, it does say here, you know, for sure, you know, renew my heart. So, you know, give me a new heart. You know, give me a yeah. heart that, that is after you. Give me a heart that, you know, and, and it says here, you know, if you trust in the ways of the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. He will give you the right things for your heart to desire. Yes. And not that he will give you what your heart desires. What you want. Because, what you yeah, want. I think that verse is very, 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 in my opinion, anyway, it's very, that, very, right. very often misconstrued and misquoted. And mm. it says that the Lord will give you what your heart should desire. Not that he will give you what your heart desires, because what your heart desires, trust me, you don't uh -huh. want it. Trust me, what your heart—it's not good for you. It's it's leading you straight down the the, the, the broad the path, path, right? But if you yeah. if you place your your heart in God's hands, He will give you what your heart should desire, and that is ultimately to glorify Him. And mm. you're so right, good because you make a good point. And um, lately, I have been praying you know you know we as christians we pray a lot for god to guide us right you know lord please guide me in this decision please guide me in that decision please guide me here guide me there take me out safely bring me home guide the kids but recently i find myself praying a lot about the guard me prayers and mm -hmm. um, i'm praying a lot of guard me prayers and i was thinking about that this morning as you do obviously in the school room um and I was thinking, it's so important that I, I need to keep praying for the Lord to guard me from myself. Because so many times you think you have the answers. So many times, well, not you, I think I have the answers. So many times I think I've got this all figured out. I've got it all nailed. I've got my routines in place. I've got all the answers. And so many times, I think, and you know, and it's it's human nature. Pride gets in the way. You think you are where you are because of of what you've done. <laughs> I just had an example this but evening. It's not. It's it's not. It is, but for the grace of God and but for God's mercy, mm. that mm. is, I'm undeserving of that grace, um, and I'm, I'm I'm no more deserving than the next person. But God in his sovereignty and his majesty, he, you know, the Bible says he'll bless those he blesses and he'll curse those he curses. Mm. If I don't know what I've done to deserve that grace or favor, all I can do is accept it gratefully, say thank you, yes. and share it with others in my life and point back to the giver of that grace and favor and say, it's not me. I'm just the vessel. He's using me. Um, and more and more recently, that's a, the, those are the sort of prayers that I've been, you know, I've been praying because I find we need to guard our, certainly we need to guard our, our hearts from ourselves <laughs> and, well, and Paul says we die to self. Yeah. And that's, that's a very deep prayer. I mean, Giselle, when Paul speaks of dying to yourself, do you think it's perhaps this idea of dying to your own needs or what your heart wants yeah um, I, I i think that's spot on because aren't we you know, when we become born again we're a new creation in christ so our old man has to die mm -hmm. uh we can't walk with jesus and hold hands with the devil at the same time so it's, you mm -hmm. you, it's it's got to go your old self mm -hmm. and as our hearts and our hearts desires or our hearts greeds really can get mm -hmm. us into trouble Mm -hmm. it, it, it really can i think desires you know, our heart's desires i would love my heart's desires i would love to see world peace. my heart's desire is i want to see revival yeah uh, uh you know i've got loads of heart's desires like that but mm -hmm. i try to keep my heart's greeds away they do I'm up every now and again because i'll walk by a furniture shop and i'll see some beautiful new living room furniture a new bedroom mm -hmm. i think oh Oh, I would love that. You know, if I did X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. I could maybe get this. Then mm -hmm. I think, no, what I've got is sufficient, and there's more things need life need it than fancy furniture. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. So to sure. me, 
having more material things is your heart mm. yeah mm. yeah that's interesting isn't it and and again the bible gives us a remedy for this in psalms 119 and verse 11 it says i have stored up your word in my heart that mm-hmm. i might not sin against you wow so god knows it's a problem yep but he's he given sure us does. a remedy for us for it mm-hmm. and you know that's that's the remedy there store up the, the word, word of God so that you might not sin against us because what would cause you to sin in the first place it's your heart your heart will turn away before your actions actually follow the exactly. first thing to turn is your heart yes. before your actions follow um you know gum there's this you know the bible's clear about meditating on on the word of God um how have you used that to help you in these guarding of your heart moments especially when temptation comes because we know it's all around us how have you used storing up the word of god in your heart meditating on it and when your heart is about to turn have you got any stories maybe to share with us quickly and how that's been helpful i feel like this is a setup (laughs) i feel like god has set me up with this question honestly because you know what lately i found out that it is easier to meditate on bad things okay Mm -hmm. like when something happens to you somebody annoys you you're on it Mm -hmm. all the time Mm -hmm. you're thinking about it Mm -hmm. i found myself in that situation and then i literally heard a voice but you know it's easier for you to meditate on bad things than Mm -hmm. on good things so i began to think okay let me meditate on the word of god and this is something that i'm still learning to do but I, i feel that for me i don't kind of take a verse and you know carry on saying it which is something I really would like to do. But mm. I find that sometimes if I feel like an emotion is overwhelming to me, I just start mm-hmm. talking to God about it. Okay. And I say how I'm feeling, blah, 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 blah. And mm. I realized that when I was doing this, then Bible verses began to drop. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. So that has kind of been what, because I think sometimes our emotions can overwhelm us or how we feel. And I'm the kind of person, I think I'm trying to build this relationship with God where I don't hide, like what's the point in hiding anything from God, right? He knows anything anyway. I want to be the one to volunteer and say, look, truly speaking, God, I would love to sit here and meditate on Psalm, I don't know, Psalm 51, but Mm -hmm. I cannot lie to you. These feelings are just too much and I need you to help me, you Mm -hmm. know? And I feel feel like usually when I surrender like that to God, I'm telling Mm -hmm. you, Bible verses will start dropping to answer your questions, you know, because mm. sometimes I tell God, look, I'm going to do this. I've had enough. Da, da, da. Mm. And then I'll just hear a Bible mm. verse and then I calm down. So that's, it. for me, it's a work in progress. But okay. my goal is to get to that place where, man, I'm just like meditating. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Giselle, same to you. How would you give anybody encouragement and how, because, you know, the scripture's clear that you know our hearts have got a problem we've got a heart problem um internally and externally we need to guard our hearts from ourselves from our own feelings and we also need to guard our hearts from external pressures and evil forces out there um yes Giselle how the bible then says you know to counter that we need to meditate on the word of God um and that will help us and and also help us turn our heart towards him how do you do that or how would you advise people to do that in that how can they apply that in their everyday life how do you apply it in your everyday life i love the prayer i heard years ago joyce meyer said it mm. uh, like her hit joyce meyer it doesn't matter but i like this prayer mm. she asked god to strengthen her in her weakest areas before mm. temptation comes calling wow okay and I think there, that, that is powerful words. Mm. And as Nahum says, be, to be able to sort of meditate on certain scriptures and things, it's mm. wonderful to be able to do that. But mm. it's the problem of trying to remember scriptures. Mm-hmm. But how I love to remember scriptures is I love calendars. Okay. And I'll keep these calendars and things with gorgeous scenery things on them. I'm going to paint this one day. I've got a mm. stick of them and I haven't got around to painting any of them yet. But I will one day when I retire. And But lots of these Christian calendars 
that you'll have maybe a month day of you and you'll mm -hmm. have a scripture for each month. Yeah. Right? Read it every day. Read mm -hmm. it every That's day. True. Read it every day. Read mm -hmm. it every day. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, at the end of the month you know, that's that's only okay it's only 12 scriptures a month or a year so it is but at but the end of the year you have learned yeah, 12 scriptures you've, you've got ammunition <laughs> and they're there then the next year you'll get 12 more scriptures mm, and you'll get like, this, I like that this, yes this isn't in place of reading your bible and reading of course devotionals. Mm. this is an addition to it but this mm. is when like I've, I have my calendar in my kitchen and how many times a day do you pass, say, the, the fridge in your kitchen? Mm, if you're like me, exactly. five, at every least five minutes. At least five <laughs> exactly. So at you least. look you look at scripture every time you pass it then. Mm. And it's, mm. it gets into you. It really does. Some of the scriptures, oh, I know that. I know that one. But still, get it into your head. Get it into your head. Yeah. Because it is, all your, it, it is all your ammunition. That's your arsenal you're building up for the mm -hmm. time that when you come into that spiritual battle with the uh, mm -hmm. uh, evil forces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah I know I what is that powerful. Yeah, Sol soldiers getting ready to go into war aren't just sort of given the sent in today. Right. They go yeah. through basic training, they go through intense training, they go mm -hmm. through all sorts of training and they're sent off with all their equipment and everything. Mm -hmm. It would be mm -hmm. stupid for a believer to go into battle with uh, mm -hmm. a spiritual forces and not mm -hmm. have their... their yeah. uh, them that's what i would yes. do wow I yes say, that's certainly could i just add also yeah so that technology is here to help us right so you can even start with yeah. what i do sometimes google is amazing mm -hmm. if you're going through a particular thing a situation right mm -hmm. and you need to that's also like god doesn't waste experiences and i mm -hmm. feel that if you use any situation you're going through a good thing or a challenge to get mm -hmm. into the scriptures so let's say i don't know you're looking for a job and you're feeling frustrated right just google scriptures for job hunting mm -hmm. something will see a host of them different mm -hmm. sites and you can pick read them and you some will resonate with you more than others pick them mm -hmm. and pray pray them you know you can make them into a prayer or you can just begin to say them if mm -hmm. you say that enough imagine okay you're job hunting for a month two months mm -hmm. Mm -hmm at least two or three of those scriptures right mm -hmm. and so whatever situation if you're praying for i don't know a new house a baby or something good has happened to you and you just want to thank god use your situations as well google is top for that That's there. okay yeah. oh wow yeah. those are some very 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 helpful useful tips and i'll just add a last one to that music okay for those that love music that love hymns love christian music always look for the background to those music um, and you will find out that a lot of worship music is themed or based on a scripture um, and it's usually you know either a psalm or any, anything actually there's been quite quite a few of them even revelation has got some beautiful beautiful music it's about revelation but yes if if music hymns Worship music is the way, is your preferred way of expressing your love yes. um, to God and speaking to God, then um, just find out a bit of background about your favorite worship tunes or worship hymns. Um, and usually the people that wrote the, the lyrics, especially, and all the music will say the inspiration came from this Bible verse or this chapter, and this is what they were trying to portray. And so next time you're singing that, your favorite chorus, you actually know that you're singing a little bit of scripture in that. <laughs> That's so that. great. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant idea. Yeah, yes. brilliant. Because a lot of Catholic hymns, and I'm trying to think of a classic one that I know now, but a lot of the old Catholic hymns are actually based on Bible scriptures. And it's of only when you're yeah, yeah, yeah. Adults, you're like, ha, ah, this was based. <laughs> this was Okay, a good example is, I'm sure many people know this, because Donnie McLaughlin sang it, Create in me a clean heart, right? That's mm. a fun. Mm. But a lot of people just sing it, Create in me a clean heart. That's clearly Psalm 51. So that's, mm. a, that's a great point, Sidoni. That's a yeah, point. yeah, yeah. But no, it's been a wonderful conversation, I think. I think so. Um, yeah. Certainly very practical, certainly very helpful. Um, it has also perhaps got me to think about some of the things and I hope it's helped 
um, everybody that's listening as well, just to think about guarding our hearts against ourselves, think about our own sinful nature um, and how our own hearts left to their own devices will mm. literally run riot and lead us straight down the path of destruction. Um, and that we really do need the Holy Spirit to come and help us to fine tune our hearts and turn our hearts back to God. And um, just an encouragement that whenever you can, pray the Lord guard my heart's prayer. On top of everything else, in addition to all your other prayer points, just add one little line in there in your prayer every day. Please guard my heart because yeah. out of the abundance of the heart, Oh. Your mouth will speak, your behavior will follow, your attitudes will follow. Um, but if the Lord is guarding your heart and he's giving you what your heart should desire, then my prayer is that he will give you the right things, desire, and your desire will be to worship him and to glorify him mm -hmm. and to do all the things that bring glory and honor to his name, not dishonor to his name. And that your actions will point to the cross. Um, and not point away from the cross and your actions will bring people closer to God and not away from God. Because sometimes you don't even need to behave a certain way. We just need to look at people a certain way. And they'll be like, oh, she's got a mean heart, man. <laughs> <laughs> that eye, that eye. <laughs> but that's not who we want to be. We want our hearts to be um, filled with love, the same love that God has shown us. We want to express that to other people around us so that they may actually be like, actually, how does Giselle love the way she loves? How is she able? And I'm using Giselle here as a personal example because I know this woman has a heart of gold. She cares for people from Sri Lanka to India, all corners of the earth. She cares for them like they were her next door neighbor. She will literally call people randomly and say, I had a dream about you and I was praying for you. I hope you're okay. Um, but that sort of love can only come when you're tuned into God. Um, because when I see that, and I know for sure that when other people see that, they're like, she's like, how do you even do it? Like, <laughs> you should be retired. <laughs> but she does it with a smile and, you know, she'll say, oh, you know, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And that will be our testimony going forward. Um, so thank you, everybody, for listening. And should we just pray quickly before we say goodnight? Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for such wonderful blessings that we enjoy thank you for grace that is undeserved thank you for mercy that we surely surely um to not even come close to, to deserving and um, yet you give it so freely um thank you jesus for taking our place on the cross for dying for us because we know lord that left to our own hearts and our own feelings we deserve that punishment we deserve that death because our hearts are so terribly wicked and we always seem to want everything that is contrary to what you have said we should do but thank you for, for sending Jesus to take that punishment for us thank you for leaving us with the Holy Spirit to guard us and to guide us and to um, renew our hearts and our minds daily and to continue to keep our hearts pointing to you until you come again Thank you, Heavenly Father, because these gifts that you have given us that we enjoy so freely, we have done nothing to deserve them. It is by your grace, and by your mercy that we enjoy them. We ask, Lord, that you would help us all to guard our hearts, help us to have these inner self-checks and to be able to know when our hearts are perhaps leading us astray, know when people around us are perhaps leading us astray, and know when we are letting the wrong kind of messages into our hearts. Help us to be able to filter them through the lens of the Bible. Help us to be able to discern them through the scripture and the wisdom that you've given us in them. Because the Bible, Lord, is your living word. And we know that it's here to stay with us until you come again. Heavenly Father, thank you for um, the discussions that we've had with regards to our young people and how we can help them guard their hearts. Help us, Lord, to be the sort of Christian parents that are unashamed to have some of these um, quote-unquote worldly conversations. Let us be the sort that are able to have those healthy conversations and through the lens of the Bible, through the lens of the scripture, so that when our young people go out there, 
they are not exposed to all sorts. And even if they are, they know when to pull back because we already have set those boundaries in there. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace and the wonderful opportunity to know you. We ask, Lord, that you would keep us safe until we come again together next Thursday. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good night, everybody in Facebook land. Good night. Good night. And good night, everybody in Zoom land. Good night, Zoom. Good night, night.